And um, so Linda is a member of the New England Mosaic Society, and it's great to have a member as a speaker. Um, she is from um, upstate New York. I'm, I'm not sure how upstate she is. Um, what amazes me is how she has found um, uh, the use of uh, eggshells as a primary tesserae. Um, and now she's using um, a relatively new product as a um, uh, as a sculpture and as um, an adhesive. So Linda, I'm going to turn it over to you. You can tell us a little bit more about yourself and we, we'll get started. Um, Amy, may I interrupt for one second? Um, I just wanted to point out for everyone that um, Linda has two screens. She has one where she's speaking or will be speaking and one um, that's a view of her of her work surface. And so if you would like to pin those, you can do that so that you don't see everyone else at the same size. So if you don't know how to do that, go up to the three little dots at the corner of both Linda's screen and, well, both of Linda's screens, and you can say pin on one and you can say add pin on the other, and then you'll see those two um, much larger. So it's entirely up to you how you wanna watch. I just wanted to offer that. Okay. Okay, I'm Linda Biggers. Um, like Amy said, I'm from upstate New York. I'm uh, about 30 minutes west of Saratoga Springs, north of Albany. Um, I started using epoxy sculpt um, a few years ago. And of course I did an enormous project with it. Um, and we'll get to that when I show you the side slideshow. Um, it's a really great product. Um, it comes from the company called Aves, and that's where I usually get my products directly from Aves. You can get them from off of Amazon. Um, any uh, several of Mosaic Art Supplies carry epoxy sculpt. I think Wits End does, Luna Mosaics does. Um, there's probably some others that carry epoxy sculpt. Um, I'm going to be showing you um, epoxy sculpt and epoxy paste and the difference and the different uses for it. Let's see. Um, so what is epoxy sculpt? It's a two part epoxy clay. Epoxy, if, if you're familiar with epoxy glue with e, epoxy, you know, that's um, a two part adhesive that's really strong. Um, this is quite a bit different than that. It um, comes in two parts. This is, this is one way it comes. This is a smaller um, package. This is a two ounce package. It comes in a A part and a B part. And those parts you will mix together to form your clay and then you can work with it. The paste is a lot um, thinner. It doesn't, it's, you, you don't, you're not gonna sculpt with it, but I will show you some uses that it has. So this is excellent for outdoor use. Um, I've done a lot of things where it is outside, it holds up really well. Um, cold, uh, um, I'm sorry, um, freeze and thaw doesn't bother it. It stays. It's very, it's a very good adhesive. Once you stick something in it, it's there. It's going to stay. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to, am I able to share a screen? Let's see. Let's find out. And I'm going to show you only one participant can be share at a time. Okay. Share screen. There we go. Let's see. Oh. 
Oh, wow. All right. There we go. Okay, so hopefully this will allow me to share. Okay. There. There we go. All right. Things we can do with epoxy sculpt. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find where this um there we go. This computer is new, so I might be searching for some things. Um, so things we could do with epoxy sculpt. This is a mosaic that I made. I made a little tree out of beads and the substrate I made with epoxy sculpt under the tree and it's it's raised a little bit. It's also the adhesive. So I did this a little bit at a time, um, molded the shapes of the tree, the branches, and then I laid in beads. And um, you don't have to do anything else. Just stick them on and they will stay. The background of this is um, eggshell and it also has um, some pebbles. This one, I made the flower substrate with epoxy sculpt, the petals and the leaves were made with epoxy sculpt. And then I mosaiced over them with, um, this is an eggshell one. And the center of that is beads and the background is glass. But the petals, you can use that to make a like a free form substrate. Works out really nice. This piece is a big mixed media piece. The figure, is slightly raised from the rest of the mosaic, the figure and the umbrella. And those were done with epoxy sculpt. Um, the beaded areas, the epoxy sculpt at, was all, the substrate and also the adhesive on this. Her um, face was sculpted with epoxy sculpt and her, ha her hair is sculpted with epoxy sculpt. So you could do a lot of things with this. It's really uh, um, a fun medium. Here's a little close-up view. And you could see um, how it's raised off the surface. This one is a very little epoxy sculpt. The brighter part of the wing on this butterfly is just a little bit raised and it's epoxy sculpt, substrate plus adhesive. So you pretty much use the epoxy sculpt, mold it as a substrate and lay in your tessera and it will stick and it will stay. This is another thing that um, I've done with epoxy sculpt, I make lettering. Uh, I purchased uh, from Amazon um, small um, cookie cutters and letter shapes. And you can roll out your epoxy and use your cookie cutters to cut um, those letters out. And I will also uh, be giving you a demonstration on that. And you can also, uh, I've got a couple of those little, um, little pieces, tiles. It's a really nice thing to do if you're if you're using it for a project and you have this little bit left over, you can make a little tile out of it. So you might want to use that in a mosaic um, later on. This is the substrate that I used to sculpt a figure on. This is um, fiberglass. It's a fiberglass substrate. This was for... Um, it was a call for art. There were, I think, 30 artists that decorated a point shoe for um, Saratoga Springs Museum of Dance. And I did mosaic on mine, plus um, epoxy sculpt to sculpt figure. And you will be seeing this. 
I first made um, an armature. And this was really hard because this the, the curve and the shape of this made it um, a little difficult. But I made the armature and it's underneath the tape is um, wire and foil. And the center picture, her whole body is coated with epoxy sculpt. And that is what is adhering it to the um, form. This has been outside for well, close to 10 years. It goes inside in the winter, um, but it's been outside from early spring till the end of October for about 10 years. And it's still, the figure is still perfect. It has, it has last summer, I think it had to be taken in um, on the heel of the shoe. Uh, there was a storm and a tree branch fell on it and damaged it a little bit. So I don't know if they will want it repaired or not, but we'll find out soon. So I added the dancer's skirt. I used some, um, it might've been weedy. I don't even remember, or it might've been, um, I think it was uh, fiberglass, um, rigid, or not fiberglass, rigid insulation. And I cut those pieces to fit and put them all together with epoxy sculpt. And um, it's a really, really solid um, substrate. It's not going anywhere. This stuff is really strong. And at the center picture, she's upside down. I put um, glue and um, seed beads together to look like tulle under her um, ballet skirt. And then I put glass over it. The top part, the bodice part of her um, her dress is another coating of epoxy sculpt where I used, I laid in the beads as I went. Um, so they're, they're adhered with epoxy sculpt. I did, um, since this was, this was the first project I used epoxy sculpt on. So, you know, it's like, okay, go big or go home here. Um, uh, so I did, I was a little nervous about it. So I did grout the beads just to give them a little more, um, uh, just a little, make it a little more secure. I probably didn't have to, but at the time I really wasn't too sure. So I wanted to play it safe. And then um, her hairdo is just, it's a combination of beads and epoxy sculpt painted with gold. Epoxy sculpt is paintable. It's, it takes paint beautifully. So that's another big plus about this stuff. So her face is painted with acrylic paint and um, her hair is painted gold, but there's also gold beads in there too. And that's the finished um, piece. So epoxy sculpt can be used to do um, a lot of fabulous, fabulous things. So I'm gonna stop sharing here because that's the end of that presentation. So you can see this is a piece that's been outside for a long time. It's been in a lot of weather, um, fairly cold, but they do bring, there's, there's other um, pieces there as well that is, they're always brought in in the winter. Our winters here are pretty brutal. So um, what I guess we can do now, unless anyone has any questions. Feel free to unmute and ask questions now also since Linda paused. Um, hi, Linda, Michelle Sider here. Thank you. Hi. Hi, great uh, demonstration. Um, and thank you for sharing um, that your, um, your dancer is beautiful. Thank you. 
I have been playing around with epoxy sculpt for a little bit. Uh -huh. um, and I was curious about the paint aspect of it. One of the things that I did, um, I was making some um, jewelry to then insert into, I'm doing this series of um, uh, and making uh, Yemenite jewelry, but I was making little beads. And what I did is I took the epoxy sculpt and I actually, I used oil paint while it was wet and kind of rolled it in there and mixed it in. And, and then, and that was kind of cool, but I never thought about using the acrylic. Um, and it's worked well, quite well. It's, it's, it's in there and it's great, but um, I know acrylic would be a lot easier. <laughs> well, acrylic, acrylic, you could paint on after it's dry. Right. If you want to tint it, oil paint is better. Um, right. Acrylic paint really changes the um, texture. It makes it feel drier. So it's not, you can use it, but it's not ideal. Oil paint is the best, um, the best way to tint it. I'll, I'll be showing you guys how to tint it. Um, I'm going to use um, Tinsol. You can use that as well. Um, but oil paint is the way to go. That, okay. That's from what I've um, researched. Um, it is the best way to color it. Epoxy Sculpt also comes in multiple colors that you can mix and match and do all kinds of things with. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Linda Medwood, I saw uh, you had oh, your- Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I just wondered uh, if one wanted to make a, you know, just a, a small area undulating surface, mm -hmm. say about two to three inches high, would you do that in layers? You know, let's let let it dry, then put more on, let it dry, put more on. Or you, you don't just... have to. You could do the whole thing at the same time. And That's it'll it'll harden up. Um it, what I would do, I would you might want to make um an armature out of okay. something else and coat it because simply because epoxy sculpt is ridiculously expensive. I know. I was going to ask about. So that. yeah, it's ex it's expensive. So if you can use an armature or something else underneath, you're going to mm -hmm. save yourself a lot of money. Um, you can use. You can go ahead and do one big solid piece, and it'll be fine. But um, okay. it's a lot of money spent. Where you could just put something. You could put something really super lightweight underneath it, and it hardens mm -hmm. up with even a thin layer, it hardens up so hard that it's not going to, it's not going to break. Okay. And you um, could actually adhere the armature with epoxy sculpt. Yeah. Yes. Sure yes. I did yeah. the okay. one I did for Saratoga, um, for the museum of dance, that whole thing, that whole dancer is the only adhesive is epoxy sculpt. Oh, okay. And it's, wow. It, it really works well. I mean, it's been it's been many years and it's still still there. It's not even attempting to come off. So it's a it's a pretty reliable adhesive. It really is. Once you get your get it stuck, it's stuck there. Um, Linda, <laughs> Linda Biggers, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, can I ask you those? Yes. Okay, so what size was that ballet slipper? That was five foot tall. Great. Um, and on that piece, after you paint, do you seal it with a spray? Um, not a spray. I put um, I put a varnish on it that was a um, a UV varnish because it's going to be outside. I used acrylic paints. Sometimes acrylic paints fade in the sun. Mm -hmm. So there's a, it's called Lasco, L-A-S-C-E-A-U-X, I believe. Varnish is a, has a UV protectant. And mm -hmm. then that's the only reason I put that on there. The, the paint's going to stay there. It's not going to go anywhere, but I was just concerned with it being outside and fading. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And then someone else, Deborah Kramer's asking, um, what's the shelf life of epoxy sculpt? Uh, oh, I, I've I've tested I've mine for many for, many years. I've had it for kept it for years. I find that your um, part B, 
will dry up sooner than part A. Part A, I think, will last forever. Um, when you, after you open it, it's a good idea when you, if you have some left to put some plastic over it so you don't get any air. If it gets a little bit dried up on the surface, you can still use it. It'll be okay. It'll, it will break back down and work. But sometimes it gets really dried up where it, it starts to get hard. And I don't really like to try to use it that way. Sometimes you could just scrape that off of the in the top of the container and it's fresh underneath i've used it and i'm having any problems so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i've had the same like actually these oh i'll show you under here this i, ha I have this big one um this is the part b this is two years old i'm still using it matter of fact i'm going to use it tonight thanks um, um okay we have two more questions in here already so um, okay. You mentioned earlier that you added the beads to the bodice in stages. Was that because you wanted to be sure it didn't dry out before you added the beads? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you have um, maybe an hour and a half working time, good working time. Um, you'll know if you're you're sticking things in it. You'll you'll be able to feel it. Oh, it, it doesn't want to stay that good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's kind of a a good um, clue to say, all right, I want to get these stuck down. But you can reconstitute it with um, this stuff, the safety solvent that is um, also sold by Aves. And this is especially formulated for epoxy sculpt. This is you. You you're gonna want this if, especially if you use sculpting tools or any kind of tools with this. This will clean it right up. If you are using a colored epoxy sculpt, and I know, like me, after mixing it up, I have to pull my gloves off. I can't. I can't work with the gloves on. So um, this stuff will help clean your hands as well. You just and it only. It doesn't take much. Just maybe a drop or two. And it'll break that epoxy sculpt down. But if your um, epoxy sculpt and you want, uh, you're still working with it, but it feels like it's starting to dry up, you only need like a drop. Put a little okay. drop on your finger and just rub it around on it, and it'll bring back that tackiness. Great. You can't do um, it forever, but you know maybe the if it's you know you don't want to keep going for hours at it because then I think you're going to lose the the stickiness. Okay. Um, okay. Before I ask the rest of the questions here, um, Marion, I see a comment from you that you can't see what Linda's showing. Um, I think you should make sure to pin Linda's iPhone as well because she's been showing us things under the camera. Um, so then another question, Linda, here, um, Cynthia is asking, is it difficult to combine parts A and B for large amounts? I've only ever used it for jewelry and can't really imagine mixing a baseball sized amount of it. Yeah, I would. I even when I did that sculpture piece, I mixed it in workable sizes, um, probably. Oh, for that, maybe. <laughs> um, that was like 10 years ago. It wasn't, it wasn't like a baseball size. It was smaller than that. It was something that, you know, I felt comfortable working with that. And it, it depends. You may, some people may feel comfortable working with big pieces. There was another artist in another project I was um, involved with um, who used, um, mixed it up big pieces and put it on the surface she was fine with that. I'm not. I I don't. I don't want to feel pressured where I have to work so fast. I'd rather get a little bit done and then add to it, and then do a little bit more and add to it. That mm -hmm. way, I know it's everything is going to be correct and it's going to be strong. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So one more question before I let you show do your demo. <laughs> Um, okay, so a question from Linda, the other, other Linda. Um, will thin set okay. adhere to epoxy sculpt? Thin set, I'm going to say, I don't think th th thin set and epoxy sculpt are compatible. 
I think you're going to want to use one or the other. Um, I haven't tried it, but I've uh, read things where it's not not really compatible. Um, hmm. You could put this on uh, like fiberglass, foam, um, styrofoam, wood, cardboard. I don't know. I, I really haven't used it with thin set. I haven't had a reason to use it with thin set. So I haven't tried it. But I okay. did read somewhere on, um, oh, it was just like a Q&A on one of the Facebook sites, Mosaic Mentoring or something. Uh, it's not the best to use on thin set with sin hmm. with well, I can't say know, it. Sin set. <laughs> yeah I I actually just just set a piece of like a little plaque that I had made with it for a school project in thin set so hopefully I didn't if now if you, that's gonna uh, fall off. if you have um like um a little tile that you've made from it and it, it's hardened and dry yeah you could put that in thin set and the thin set will hold it Oh, okay. So you but don't mean you it's don't want to try to it's... use epoxy sculpt on and expect it to stick to thin set. I am not sure. I'm, you know, I would test it. I mm -hmm. have it. I haven't used the two together, but you can like if you're if you're having a, using putting tile pieces in embedding and thin set. Yes, you can use hardened epoxy sculpt. It'll it'll be fine. Okay, great. All right. I want you to be able to keep going. Michelle's asking, will it adhere to metal? I can answer that. Yes. Um, okay. So sh show us a little more and then we'll get back to questions. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Let's see if I can get this underneath here. And feel free to yell at me or tell me if um, I pull out of the um, camera zone here, because I tend to do that. I have to get close to it. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how epoxy paste works. And I'm going to try to do this really quickly because we're not having a, we don't have a heck of a lot of time yet. Um, 30 minutes, I think. Okay. So with these, we're just going to eyeball how much we put in. We want pretty equal and we're going to squeeze it out. And I think this is the one that, oh, there it goes. It's <laughs> out all that easily. I have not used this in a while, but there we go. We're just going to put a little bit of this in. I know I'm probably, my hands are probably in the way. I think the other side squeezes out easier. I want to get a little bit more. And with this epoxy paste, Try to avoid touching it. It is really, really sticky and maybe hard to get off your hands. I've got a little bit on my hands now, but now it'll be all right. Um, we're going to eyeball putting in our two. Just trying to get the same amount about the same amount, our parts A and part B. Okay, that looks, the one is squished down a little bit more. That's close. And then with this, you can see how, how goopy it is. You could take your a skewer or a wood, wooden stick and you really want to mix it. Give it a good, a good hard mixing. I'm going to go a little bit fast with this, so I have more to show you with the epoxy sculpt. This stuff is this stuff is pretty nice. No, we don't have too much in here. Excuse me, but I can't see any of the work. I'm sorry. But, no, that's not that's not you, Linda. Um, okay, so if you if you are watching this and you cannot see Linda's hands and her work surface, you have to look for the little box, the Brady Bunch square that's labeled Linda's iPhone. Oh, thank you. Oh. Go to the very top of that box. You'll see three little dots. Touch the three dots and then choose pin. 
Okay, and then you'll see that in addition to Linda. So Emily, I'm on an iPad. I don't see any of that, but I'm just looking at it in the mosaic. So, you know, I can see both at the same time. I can okay, see, yeah. I can see everybody. So that's okay. an option too. Yeah. So I don't have, there's not a lot mixed up in here, but that's okay. So what we can do, what this is nice for is if you have um, a silicone mold like this, that has a lot of little details in it, the epoxy paste is nice for this. Um, epoxy sculpt is a little stiffer and it may be harder to push in to get all those little details. So, and when you put this in, and it's a little messy, um, we could just, I'm gonna just put it in one of these here. Just spread it in. And if a little bit gets over the edge, it's okay. Once you take it out of the mold, it will, it will, um, you can break it right off. It, it, it'll be so thin. But it's really, the stuff is really, really sticky. And um, it is self-leveling. And it will level out. The thing about epoxy paste is the working time is quite long on it. And once it's in the mold, I'm not going to be able to take it out till tomorrow. It's not going to harden up. It needs to harden up overnight. Yeah, you have to give it a good 24 hours. So that's one thing you can do with it. Another thing is, and Really, I'm not, unless you were going to use um, straight epoxy sculpt to make your mosaic or whatever kind of artwork you want, you can use this, if I have enough here, just to show you, to make a substrate. And you could take, this is a piece of um, rigid insulation. And you can spread this on. Now, if I had more, I, you know, if I could do more, I could cover this whole thing. I would not consider doing this on a large piece. It would cost a fortune. You might as well just get a piece of um, backer board or something to use. Um, I never use this to make substrates. I'm just showing you that you can, but this will harden out. This will self-level and smooth out. And um, if this was wrapped completely in the epoxy, you would have a nice hard piece that would be suitable, suitable for outside. And you just spread it on. I'm spreading this out on here pretty thin. And that's um, epoxy paste. These tiny little tubes, and these are half an ounce each. So this is an ounce. And this is like, I think it's like $12 to buy. So it's expensive. Um, nice for small stuff. But this is very, very sticky. And it, you do have a longer working time. You could spread it on here and lay some beads or something on it, small things on it. Um, it'll hold it. It's really, it, like I say, it is very sticky. And I would really don't get your hands in it. Wear gloves if you're going to be putting something in it because once it gets on your hands, it's really, it's, it's very sticky. Okay, so that's epoxy paste. So how is epoxy sculpt different? Epoxy, well, let me get that out of my way here so I can touch it. Um, epoxy you, sculpt. Look, Linda, well, I'm gonna mm -hmm. interrupt, um, Amy. Yes. Amy, would you mind? Um, pinning Linda's iPhone for the group, just because it seems like a lot of people are having trouble finding it. 
Um, okay. I know there's a lot that. of people on. Sometimes it's hard to find a yep. certain, certain one. You can one. keep going though. Thanks. Now, when you are mixing epoxy sculpt, wear gloves. Especially, especially in the beginning, you can you can work with this um, without gloves. Some people prefer to keep the gloves on, but while you're working it, mixing it, that chemical reaction is happening. So it's probably a good idea. Well, let me see. I you know I wanted to use the white one because I want to show you how to color it. We don't need to use that one now. All right. Oh, there we go. This, I have a little one with white. Okay. Let's see. This is the part B. And it's, well, you know what I'm going to do? There's a little bit left here. I'm going to just use the whole thing. So I'm not going to fight with it. Lindy, your hands are, are not in the fully. In oh, the I'm sorry. Thank you. Sometimes you have to muscle it out of the container. It's pretty stiff and sticky. It's a good way to build some hand strength. <laughs> Let me get this thing here. Help me get that out. And if you use any tools with this, as soon as you're finished working, you're going to want to make sure you clean it with um, your um, safety solvent. So you're going to want to get two pieces about the same size. And then I like to roll them into a snake. I find this an easy way to get it mixed mixed up and then twist them around and then it's just squish 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 twist it and squish it and you'll know when it's mixed up when you don't see any of the colorant and the gray um b part left it will all be one solid color if you're doing a really really big piece, this will take you a while. So this is another reason why you wanna use um, smaller sections. So this is, it's getting there. I still see a little gray in here. And sometimes as you're mixing it, you can start to feel, it starts to feel a little bit warm. And that's the chemical, chemical um, reaction happening. You know, if you add coloring, you're probably going to want to keep your gloves on because I know Tinsol will um, stain your hands. And that is what I'm going to do now. Um, to show you how you can color it. When you add colorant, you don't want to add too much. It's kind of, think of it like when you're adding a tint to um, a grout or thin set. You don't want to overdo it because you don't want it to um, affect the um, hardening of it. Okay, that is pretty well mixed up. So I'm just going to roll this in a ball and I'm going to make a little divot. And I've got some tinsel. I, I like to use this for um, tinting um, thin set and mortar um, grout because this is, um, let me just make sure it's mixed up in here. Um, this is a liquid, so this can be used as part of your liquid. And it's worked well for me. Now you don't want to put only just like a little drop. You don't need much. 
and you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to um, mess with the chemical or the um, adhesiveness or the hardening of the epoxy. So we're going to start mixing this together. And it's, it's see, I only used a drop in this and you can already see that it's a, it's a pretty intense bluish green that is, this is becoming. Oil paint is recommended. I don't have any oil paint because I never use it. And then I'm gonna buy it just to color um, epoxy sculpt. I'm happy with the tinsel and the, um, or once it dries, if you want to paint it, you can use acrylic paint. Acrylic paint, if you add it as a colorant, will um, change the texture. And it kind of gets it dry and, and it doesn't, it loses its tackiness a little bit. So you can use it, um, but it might not be as nice to work with. Then we've got this pretty much mixed up. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because I don't want to waste time. I'm going to show you just some of the things we can do with this. Okay, so with um, one advantage um, epoxy sculpt has with molds. If it's a mold where um, you don't have a lot of fine detail, this is good. With the little delicate detailed ones, um, you don't want to pull it out, the epoxy out right away. Let me get a little more than I need in there. We don't want to. I can press this into a mold now. Push it right down in there. This is a silicone mold. And then you can, you no, know, you're gonna fight with me, aren't you? You could pop it out. You don't, well, this one is really soft. <laughs> there we go. Well, I messed it up a little bit, but I've got this little face here. You can take it out right away if you need to. I wouldn't use it in um of the one of the finer leaf molds. I'm gonna squish you up and put you back in there. I don't like the way you look. Um, but you can use it in molds like this. This is just a little face. It doesn't have a lot of detail. Um, you could it. I've I've sat here and I've put um made several. Just push them in pull them out. You can, if you really need to, if you need to, uh, something to help it release. This is um, cornstarch. Don't use a lot of it. You could just maybe just touch a little bit in the mold and the silicone usually pops out good, but don't let it build up in there. That is going to help this release a little better. Well, there you go. You don't even want to stick in there. And then, come on. There we go. Whoop. There. And that comes right out. So a little bit of cornstarch, but you don't want to be working on it where you're working it and having a lot of Corn starch in it, just a, a little bit if you're going to need a release. Um, let's see. Another thing I like to do is I like to make little um, word tiles like these, piece, piece. I get a lot of pieces little um, one that says love. This is great to use um, 
when you have leftovers. And I make these, I have, you could buy these on Amazon. Oh, where are they? Here we go. These little letter stamps. And you can make a, a little shape. And you could you could be really fussy if you want to and cut it exactly square. And I like to just kind of pat it down a little bit. And then find my letters. And these gloves have to go. I cannot work with gloves on. Okay. Um, and we'll do a little one that's you just want to push it down just a little. There's an L. Can you see this? I mean, I don't want to um, move out of the camera. But sometimes I do that, and I apologize for that. Okay, so I need an O. I'll make a little one that says love. And you just push them down. These letter stamps come in all kinds of styles. Um, if you look at like um scrapbooking places you could find these stamps they come in different sizes and different fonts and they're a lot of fun and i'm going to show you something really cool you can do with this too there we go okay so i have a love in here with my stamps Another fun way to color epoxy sculpt is with mica powder. I don't know if anybody's ever used that before, mica powders. Let's find a dark one. It's um it's like a mineral, I guess. They're very light um powders. Let me get one of these up in the close to the camera, if you can see it. You don't need much of this at all. Let's get the, let's use this one. Usually with mica powders, and you can buy these on Amazon, um, different art supply stores carry them. Usually there's probably a little bit in the cap. You need very little. And I just put a little bit on my finger or you could just touch it into the jar and then rub it on your little tile. And you wanna just put a little bit, you just wanna hit the surface and that's gonna bring those um, letters right up. Nice. So you can, you can see this and it sticks right to the epoxy sculpt and it has a very, um, almost an iridescent metallic finish. But see, I'm just doing that much on my finger and just rubbing it on there and it sticks right in. So that is a fun, that's kind of a fun thing to do with these. Um, I make these whenever, if I'm doing something and I have um, leftover epoxy sculpt, I'll sit down and make a bunch of little tiles and um, plan to use them in a mosaic. I don't know if this is stuck. This might have stuck to the cardboard. There we go. If you can, you can leave it on a surface. Um, just don't press it down, and it'll dry. It'll be all right. Also, what you can use is if you want to maybe roll it out. You can. You. I'm going to fold this a little bit. Use a piece of fabric and you have your piece of epoxy sculpt. And then if you want to roll it out really even, you can use, um, put something on each side like um, skewers work. These are a couple pieces of glass. And then I don't have a, Prayer, but what I usually do is I grab anything that's handy. I have a little round bottle of paint and I'm going to, 
Oh, no, it wants to stick to that. See, it is quite sticky. You can also, where are we going? Throw up like a piece of parchment or fabric over the top of it. And then roll it like this. Okay, and then that'll come off. That doesn't, it'll stick a little bit, but not, not too much. You'll be able to peel it off. Then we have another fun thing to do is, let's get these out of the way. Cookie cutter letters. And we can make a, we can make a, a little word out of this or well, whatever we want to do or just make a few letters. Um, let's see. I should have pulled out the correct letters. There we go. So what I like to do because these cookie cutters, it's sometimes hard to get the epoxy sculpt out of the cookie cutter. I like to give it a little, dip it into the um, cornstarch, tap it off. And that way that's gonna help it release. And I'll just pop that in there and just use a little tool or something to push it out. Oh, you're gonna stay in there, aren't you? There we go. And we have a letter. I did mess this one up a little bit, but we can smooth that out after. And A little cornstarch and the cornstarch doesn't seem to affect the epoxy sculpt much at all i mean i wouldn't um keep working it where you have a lot of it in there this is stubborn Huh, I do this a lot. Now it's not going to work for me. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I messed this one up. I'll have to do that one over. Let's do a simpler letter for, and we're not wasting time messing with that. I'll do the V. And that one should come out a little better. It does, it does want to adhere to the um, cookie cutter. So that's why I'd like to use the release. Now this L that I messed up, we're just going to put a little single drop of safety solvent and just run that over the top and gently smooth it out. Can you see me what I'm doing? There we go. And we have the L and the V looks good. V looks good. So that's how we can make some letters. I like to also um, oh, use like the back of a paintbrush. And kind of texture it a little bit. I do that a lot. I, I kind of like that. Give it that pounded metal look. And then I like to use the mica, mica powders on it. Linda? Yeah. Can you see? Um, I'm sorry. Yes, we can see. Well, it's almost eight o'clock. Oh, my. So um, is there another topic you want to cover before we um, go um into another q a session um i don't i can show well we can do a simple quick um 
just a sculpture thing. I could do it real quick. How much, how much time do we have? Oh gosh, we don't have much time. Um, well, sculpting, sculpting is, you know, the same as you would use regular clay or polymer clay. You would sculpt it the same way. I think everyone has their own sculpting techniques. I don't probably don't have to show you that, but I'm sure there are questions. So I will, maybe we should take the questions. Okay. Great. Um, so there was, um, there were a couple of questions from earlier. So one was, would you recommend epoxy paste to repair a mosaic where tessera need to be replaced? Um, you mean like a, a, a piece of um, tessera that's missing? Yes. You could, um, you, it, Poxy, you you might be able to. Um, you'd probably want to tint it to match the color. It's okay. and I would definitely tape off the mosaic off. You know any of the other um, tessera that's intact, tape it off because if that gets on, and mm -hmm. if you don't notice it right away, it's not going to come off. Yep. Um, and Michelle was asking, do you let it dry in the mold? I think she's talking about the one that you did with the paste. The paste, yeah, you have to let it dry in the mold. And it's going to take 24 hours. Um, epoxy sculpt, you don't have to. Epoxy sculpt is um, thick enough where you can you can get it out of the mold. Um, if it's a more detailed mold, you might want to let it maybe set up a little bit um, and then take it out because, you know, it, the mold is going to want to hold it back in. And if you have a little, like a little tail or something off of it, that might, um, might not work out. Okay, great. Um, so Marianne's wondering, why are you using solvent? Like I This think is, uh, this is uh, safety solvent. This will help um, reconstitute your paper, um, epoxy sculpt. If you're, you're getting close to the end of your working time and it's starting to dry out a little a little of this will reconstitute it if you have um something that you're you've made and you've got like a little let me let me see if we, you've got like a little um divot in it like that sometimes you can use a little of the solvent just to work it in and smooth it out if it's a sculpted piece that you don't want to redo. And see see how it, it fills it in and you just keep working it. It softens up that surface. Also use this to clean your tools. You could just put a little bit on a, a paper towel or something um, like, and you don't need much. You could just put, just a couple drops on and I was using this tool and this, it takes it right off, it shines it right up. It takes it right off. Okay, great. So this I would recommend having this, if you're working with uh, epoxy sculpt to get the safety solvent. Yeah. Um, usually any place that sells epoxy sculpt sells this as well. You right. can use water to smooth it out. But the I, I feel like the safety solvent works better. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Michelle has a question and I'd say maybe one more question after that we can take. But so okay. she's asking, do you ever mix the epoxy paste in a plastic bag and then cut the corner to squeeze it out? I have not done that. <laughs> I, I, this stuff is really ridiculously sticky. I'm going to bet it would just gum up and thick in the bag unless you had it full enough it might come out it's um i don't um like it that much i think it's hard to work with um i prefer epoxy sculpt but if you want to i think it's really good for smoothing out a surface because if you have something that you made with epoxy sculpt and you have um something happened where the surface is rough or something like that. You can use 
a tiny bit of epoxy paste and it'll smooth it out. It is self-leveling and it will, um, it'll work nicely for that. It'll, it'll smooth it right out. All right. Wonderful. Um, so I know some people are already saying they have to go, but is there anyone with a pressing question while we still have Linda, our expert on the line? Mm -hmm. No, you know where to find her if you need her. <laughs> um, all right, then I think I will pass it back to Amy, but you're getting some thank yous, Linda, in the chat. Um, Amy, you want to close us out? Sure. Um, again, I want to thank you, Linda, um, for a great demo. Um, and we are going to be putting the recording in our um, YouTube channel. So I will send the link out to everyone when that is done. Um, and this is the end of our webinar series for um, the first half of the year. Um, we do have one webinar scheduled in October um, and that will be on uh, mosaic murals. So um, I think that's it. Everyone have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, Linda. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.